Manchester's Tony Okubia has held the British and Commonwealth light welterweight titles. Now he's moved up to the welterweight division and he needs a convincing victory tonight against the American Verdell Smith. Good evening from the Stockport Town Hall where we'll see if Tony Okubia has a future amongst the world's top welterweights. The Nigerian-born fighter who lives in Bolton tops the bill here because of a training injury last week to the former British bantamweight champion Billy Hardy. Hardy's comeback then sidelined but instead we have an intriguing main event in prospect with Okubia taking on an American opponent, Verdell Smith. Yukubia is a fight night regular who's not had that many fights for a 32-year-old. He's won 13 of his fights by knockout. But it was a points decision that won him the British and Commonwealth Light Welterweight title against Steve Larrymore of the Bahamas back in 1989. And last year, after losing both titles and seemingly with nowhere to go, Ukubia stepped up a weight and has already got a win in the division. But can he go even further as a welterweight? Well, Ukubia is a very strong fighter. Uh, some of his wins at light welter have come because of his superior strength. He's never traded on tremendous hand speed or foot speed, so the move up to welterweight might be a good idea at this stage in his career. We always worry about some of the Americans we haven't heard of coming into this country. Now, what sort of opponent are you expecting from Verdell well, Smith? I think uh, Tony Akubia will remember the last American who came over. He really ended up with someone who was too hot to handle, uh, a fellow called Belcher. And I think Tony started very slowly that night, so I think that this is a little bit of an unknown quantity. We know his record, but we don't know the, the quality. But I think Tony will step up into the ring a little bit sharper tonight and really get down to work because he has to impress. And if he can win tonight, you see the future open for him then? Yes, especially the, the world title situation at the moment. It's far easier now for fighters to get the championship contest without actually being established in a weight division. So a couple of decent wins, who knows, eh, Tony could be boxing with the world title. It could be Manning Galloway, the WBO champion. We'll wait and see. Thank you very much, Jim. So let's get on with the main event then, scheduled for 10 rounds. Can the American Verdell Smith really stand in the way of Tony Okubia's future hopes? We'll find out. Jim goes downstairs to the commentary position to join his regular partner, Reg Gutteridge. But first of all, let's hear from our regular master of ceremonies, Vince Miller. Gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the main event of the evening, an international welterweight contest of 10 rounds, three minutes each round. Presenting in the blue corner from Oklahoma City, USA, Verdell Smith. And in the red corner from Manchester, Tony Akubia. And the official way at 1 o'clock this afternoon, Smith scaled 10 stone 2 pound, Akubia 10 stone 4 pound. Your officials appointed by the British Boxing Border Control are as follows. Your chief steward in charge, Mr. Dennis Lockton. Your medical officers, Rosenberg and Sim. Your timekeeper, Mr. Frank Capewell and your referee for this contest from Leeds, Mr. Mickey Van. This is the main event of the evening. Well, first time we've seen the American Verdell Smith in this country from Oklahoma City. And that facing there, of course, is Tony Akubia from Manchester. Mickey Van, the Leeds referee. Now, I don't know too much about uh, Verdell Smith. His record doesn't look too bad. So it's 10 rounds then at the welterweight uh, division. 10-4 Akubia, 10-2 Verdell Smith. The only thing I remember about uh, Smith, Jimmy, fought the Olympic champion uh, Robert Wangila in uh, Arizona, lost on points. So it shows he's uh, competed in top class. Yeah, and Wangila stopped quite a few opponents, Reg, so I mean, that's not a, a bad, bad result. And the first few seconds, he certainly moves around sharply enough. Pulls his elbows in nice and tight when the cubic gets close. It looks as though he knows his way around the ring. Right! Could only find three fights for him last year, uh, so he's not been the busiest of fighters. But you know, Arizona and uh, Oklahoma City, where he lives, it, it's... Um, not that much boxing goes on in, in the top grades. They have to travel somewhere on the East Coast and West Coast to get in the big time. He snaps the punches out nice and uh, sharply, Smith, but uh, I get the feeling when Akubia throws punches, he doesn't quite know. You know he, he doesn't look as though his defence is too sound. See, he kind of loses the place. He just lost the place again. They look up now trying to grab hold of Akubia. 
I get the impression, Reg, if uh, it could be a puts them under pressure, they might fall to pieces. Oh, but he dears. certainly throws nice punches. I mean, he's, uh, he's clutching like an octopus there, and quite rightly, referee Van says we don't want any more of that. Thank you. Actually, Smith said he's had uh, more fights, but actually couldn't say who and where it was. So uh, we'll leave it. Let, leave it at three official. Last year, 23 and all, we make it. And Cuba actually has only had 20. Seems though he's been around a long time. He's 32. Former British and Commonwealth champion at light weight. Let's see, 10 stone division. And he lost uh, to Andy Holligan in Liverpool last June. Now, of course, from the Mickey Duff camp, Andy Holligan. Smith looks as though Reggie could be one of these fighters that's uh, in a few untidy battles. Whenever he's under pressure, he loses. Oh, oh, oh dear. <laughs> Tell you what, Jim, he knows all about that. That is, is a bit of a rarity, seeing the Cubia on the floor. Neat. Well, he was experienced enough to take the, the full nine without the timekeeper saying it, but he was down for nine, and, and this would be a, a big, big upset indeed. He hasn't recovered, Reg. He's still pretty badly shaken. That is a shot for Tony Akubia. That's the last thing you expect from him. That must have been a good shot. I'm looking forward to seeing that on replay, but he hasn't recovered yet. He's going to have to just see this round out. Well, it's coming up to the last few seconds now, Jim. J just so do a bit safe. of spoiler on his own. Just grab hold of this fellow, lose the round, but don't worry about it. But that certainly was a shot. I think, Jim, that's the first time that uh, Tony Akub has been down as a professional. I can't remember any through his long career. Well, long, 20 fights, but it seems long. Here it is. Well, if I look at this, bang, the punch travelled all the way. Caught him as he leaned back in the ropes. A lovely punch, bang in the chin. That yeah. was a good shot, and Tony didn't recover too quickly. Yeah, let's have another look at it. As you say, it travelled all the way, but I'm afraid Akub had got the message. So he seemed to lead with the left, then sway back slightly, and then overcame the right. Just I banged the into the ropes there, Jim, goes. almost like a catapult job there, he more or less fell into the punch. Lack of concentration as well must have been in the opening round, and uh, promoter manager Jack Trickett obviously being a bit anxious on the outside there, and second Ray Farrell, and the referee just checking that he's OK. Well, what do you know about that? I think I'm right in saying Akubia hasn't hit the deck before. But he did well, he, he stayed there for the full nine seconds and uh, he looked at the referee, Jim. He seemed in control all right, he was hurt nonetheless. You know, in the first couple of seconds, we, we did say that uh, Smith threw the punches nice and sharply. As when he was under pressure, he didn't look quite so good. But he certainly threw that one sharply, it was a lovely punch. He gave Tony all the trouble he needed. Akubi is going to have to keep his chin down and keep this fellow under pressure. I think he is a little bit of a spoiler, I think he can be a little bit untidy up close. But I think it could be a want to see, stay up close if possible, work to the body. I think you'll find him too, that Smith's nickname in Oklahoma City was called the, the spoiler, you're quite right there. Look, he, he won't let you fight too much at close quarters, look at that, look. You see, when he misses with a punch or he finds himself under a little bit of pressure, he ducks and dives and he comes up and grabs hold. And that's certainly given the Kubia something to think about, that little bit of danger. That was a nice little feint from a Kubia. Then. That's, what, that's what he wanted to do, a bit more on that feint. Force the fellow to, to make his move first. He's got to take the play away from him now, the American. He's, Kubia's got to say, hold on, you can't do that in my town. Well, almost his town, just down the road in Stockport Town Hall from Manchester. Oh, he's turned southpaw as well now, Jim. No wonder they nicknamed him Sporty. Not sure what he's going to do next. And taking liberties by knocking, knocking the favourite over. Oh, what a left foot. Oh, no. Anything you can do, I can do better, says the Kubian. A cracking left hook. Now, is he going to get up? He's, no, he's, he's OK, but... 
Nicky Van's having no, he's having a good look because his knees buckled there. And he's having an argument with him now, uh, Wendell Smith. Uh, he, he, he allowed the Cougar to get back from a punch, but now the second there, well, we don't want to know what he thinks. Ronnie Lee Warrior, he fought Glenn McCrory and Nick Wilshire here and uh, didn't win any medals. Jim, have a look at this replay. Well, it was a lovely punch that pulled him over, but I, I want to see Smith's face when he gets up. He pulled a little face as the referee moved over as though he wasn't sure himself that he wanted to continue. If we can see his face as he comes up, you know, he had that little, uh, I've lost interest look in his face, then when the referee stopped the fight, he changed it. But if we can just get a little look at, well, when he's on his feet, he didn't actually look as though he much fancied going on, so maybe that's why, maybe that's why, uh, see, look at here, he's kind of shaking about, a little, looking a little bit confused, I think that's why Mickey Van stopped the fight. Well, there's one thing, Jim, I think the old legs had uh, disobeyed him there, he, he was really trying to prop himself up, and the expression, you're quite right, the expression on his face gave the impression, always the... The crowd are always not close enough to it, always have a bit of an argument. Oh dear, let the fella go on. Ladies and gentlemen, in two minutes and nine seconds of the second round, the referee has stopped the contest. Smith being in no condition to defend himself. The winner, Tony Ekubia. Your appreciation comes for Wendell Smith from Oklahoma City in the United States of America. Come on, the final fighter. Tony, all is well that ends well, but you look badly shaken in the first round. That's always the case of the first round with me, and I'm very slow warming up. And uh, it just came out of the, uh, the blues, really. I didn't expect it. Bang. See, it happens. Well, you're entitled not to expect it, because it's never happened to you before. That's right. So I wasn't expecting it, and then as it happened, luckily enough. So you get caught on the ropes, actually. Yeah. And I just relaxed for a minute. Smack, you went. So you're having to clear your head. I mean, what, what's actually going through your mind, if anything, is at that well, point? Well, I was just listening to the Mickey Van, just counting, counting, just listening to him. As soon as he reached eight, and I started preparing to get up. Were the legs gone a bit? No, the there was nothing wrong with the legs at all. Just all up, up there, really. You know, it was a bit shaky. The room was a bit shaky when I got hit. When the eight second I counted, it was all cleared up. Well, he, he's known as the spoiler back home, but uh, he got spoiled himself tonight with a terrific shot. Definitely. If anybody tells me he's calculating that you, you start a combination and you, you catch him with one, he goes down, and you're glad he's gone down. He's not actually planned for it. He didn't look as if he wanted to get up either. He didn't want to get up. I think he was just counting the rank. He was spoiling it in between. The first round was just spoiling it all the way, really. You know, just so he didn't give him enough time to warm up. Well, the start of quite a night here at Stockport. It's been an outstanding bill and two of the best contests coming up right after the break. The first one up is a return from November 1990, when a lot of people reckon that that super featherweight contest then between Sugar Jibbalaroo and Frankie Foster was one of the small hall fights of the year. This one is just as good, and it's right up after this. <laughs> 